Hello everyone, I'm very glad to see you again through our beloved TV channel Norsat English and our program, Our Christian Faith. Wishing you all the best by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today I shall talk about the fifth sacrament, marriage. At the beginning, God created Adam and Eve to help each other and to live in his love and grace, as we read in Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Our Heavenly Father created us carrying His image, His love, and having the message of fruitfulness and responsibility for the life He created in this world. God gives us blessings to take care of ourselves and others in the will of God. And that is based on the love of God we share with others in our lives. That love is translated into relationships and deeds in our lives with the blessing of and according to the will of God. The relationship between a man and woman to make a family and share love between them is sacred and holy because it's a response to God's will in a very amazing way that we call marriage. So, why is marriage, the relationship between two people, a sacrament? The marriage in the church is not just a relationship between two, but three, man, woman, and Jesus Christ. Our Lord will take care of and fill this relationship with his love. So the Christian family shares God's love among them not just their love. Therefore, that relationship and family is sacred. Let us take two examples for two married people who made a family and lived with the love of God from the Bible. In the Old Testament, we find in the book of Genesis chapter 24, the marriage story of Isaac and Rebekah. Abraham sent his servant to take a wife to his son Isaac from his native land and relatives. And the servant asked Abraham what he should do if the woman is not willing to come to his present home. Abraham said, as we read in Genesis chapter 24, verse 7, the Lord the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and to promised me an oath, saying to your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. Of course, we have the choice of whom we want to live our lives with. But God, as our Heavenly Father, will help us and bless our lives if we ask Him by faith. This is what Abraham did. So he got a wife for his son who filled Isaac's life with happiness and joy, as we read in Genesis chapter 24, verse 67. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, and he married Rebekah, so she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Isaac accepted and loved the choice of God for him, and he was comforted in his life. So, 
The marriage in God's blessing is not just an emotion of love, but acceptance of the life and the blessing of God and sharing them with our partner. That leads us to more blessing in our lives. In the New Testament, we find another amazing story, that of Priscilla and Aquila. Those mentioned by name six times in the New Testament, always together as a couple. They exercised leadership among the fledging churches and were held in high esteem. Their partnership highlights one model of ministry in the early church. St. Paul calls them his co-workers in preaching the gospel, praises their willingness to risk their necks to help him. And twice notes that churches meet in their homes. This family did not just share love among themselves, they shared and served the gospel, preaching and serving the church. It's the fruit of the amazing life with Jesus Christ. The Christian marriage is the sacrament which unites the two by the blessing of being a small church. The two enjoy God's love and carry the responsibility of living together and taking care of their children, leading them to Christ. So Jesus Christ will be the center of our Christian families. I will explain the relationship we have in the families in the church by this simple figure. Let us go to this figure. We see that Christ is in the center. Christian marriage is based on putting Christ in the center of our lives. All of the families built on Christian marriage will connect it to Jesus Christ and are enjoying the life in him. They are connected by their love too, which is made stronger by Christ in the center. All the members of the family go to Christ and Christ fills them by his love and blesses their love and lives. As a sacrament, Christian marriage has the three conditions. The material element is represented in the yes, the acceptance of the other to be his or her partner for life in the grace of God. So it is not just yes, it is a covenant the couple takes to be one in Christ in flesh. And the, and the children will be the fruit of this covenant and love in the grace of God. Therefore, Christian marriage is based in righteousness, must have no divorce. Fornication breaks this covenant, and that is a sin. For the form, the prayer and the blessing of the administering priest will be represented, especially the blessing of crowning the couple in the right in the church by the legal priest who administering the sacrament. Dears, in the next videos, I shall continue explaining the sacraments in detail. Lord Jesus Christ's blessings and love and the prayer of Our Lady Virgin Mary, saints and martyrs to be with you all the times. Goodbye.